thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 or 40 or 50 minutes of advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J, and I am here with Shah Barrett. Hi there. Wendy Valor. Hello. Cheryl Phipps. Hi. And this week we have an awesome guest. We have Virginia Milner from Amazon. Yay! Yay. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, Hi. Welcome to the spa. Now, Virginia is going to talk to us all uh, today about the um, Amazon's new program, uh, Vela. Do I just call it Vela or is it Amazon Kindle, Vela? Kindle Vela. Kindle yeah. Vela. Okay, Kindle Vela, um, which is a new program that's been put together by Amazon. Um, I'm going to go into it in a deep dive and explain how it could be useful to you as a self-publishing author. So that's awesome. Um, now, first, I'm just going to do a quick bio about Virginia, and then we will get right into it. Okay, everyone good? Yep. Awesome. Okay, so this episode, we welcome Virginia Milner from Amazon. Virginia is the product, uh, sorry, the principal product manager at Kindle Direct Publishing and leader of the Kindle Valor project. If you haven't heard, the Kindle Valor program is Amazon's newest mobile first interactive reading experience for serialized stories. It launched to authors in April 2021 and readers in July 2021. So it's been going just a month or month and a half. And it's a very new program. Virginia is going to tell us all about how we as authors can explore this new opportunity. It's very exciting. Yay. So yay. Thanks for joining us today, Virginia. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. So so let's just start at the beginning. Let's, you know, what is uh, Kindle Valor and yeah, what is it? Yeah, sure. So Kindle Vela, as, as you said, is a new mobile first uh, reading experience for serialized stories. So the idea is readers are uh, reading stories on their, their mobile phones um, or devices. Um, and these are stories that they're reading one episode kind of chapter at a time. So on the publishing side, from the author's standpoint, um, writing a story and publishing it you know, in segments. Um, and these are stories that could be, you know, told over a few days, weeks, months, or even years with the episodes coming out in a serial fashion. Okay, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, wh what was the idea behind it? Like, where does, where does the idea for this kind of serialization via mobile phone come from? We'd heard from our customers that they were interested in um, reading experiences that they could have in shorter, uh, shorter segments. So reading shorter s snippets of, of content at a time um, in kind of those in-between moments that you have in life versus when you have time to sit down and kind of read a full book. But that they, one of the things that they really loved about reading was the connection that you get um, reading, you know, stories that go on, you know, over a period of time, the connection you feel to those characters, to the author themselves, um, especially when you're reading, you know, a, a series or something like that. So we really wanted to create something that, that bridged those two customer desires, something that, that readers could read, you know, quickly when they had time, but that they could, you know, follow over a longer period of time and really feel that connection with as they kind of bake the story into their daily routine. Mm. Is, it, is it more thinking along the lines of, you know, what popped into my head as you were describing was something like Gilmore Girls, where there's this long running kind of two main characters and the, and the, um, the, the, the characters have become that connection to the reader and the reader gets to continue. Is that kind of an idea behind it or? Yeah, yeah, definitely some similarities there um, or, you know, other kind of, you know, similar, like if you think about kind of TV programs that may go on for years and years and years, um, you know, like that are friends or week. something. Yeah, exactly. Right. Once a week or daily where, you know, this doesn't so much work this way anymore, but mm -hmm. when TV, what really came out, like you had that day of the week that friends aired or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and you'd really look forward to that and connect connecting with your friends mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, on yeah. that day. So that's, that's really the experience that we're, um, you know, we're hoping to create with Kindle Vela where um, you're following as a reader, you're following a story and you, you know, you know that the author is, you know, publishes their new episodes on Tuesday and Thursday right. and so you just really look forward you know at you know Tuesday night at 9 p.m you're finishing your day you know you get a notification on your phone oh the newest episode is here I'm going to sit down like with, with a, my glass of wine 
um, and just have a, you know, read it. And then I know on Thursday there'll be a new episode and then next week. And it's kind of just like that, de the dependability of that and, and that becoming part of your life and looking forward to connecting with those, those characters on mm -hmm. a regular basis. So it's kind of like almost like appointment reading, isn't it? You know, they talk about appointment viewing for television back in the day when we didn't have yeah. everything kind of to binge. So it's kind of almost a little bit, I don't want to use the word retro, but it's getting back to that kind of anticipation, like building some anticipation into the experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we know that some readers, that is not their preferred way to read either. Mm -hmm. So we know that some readers will wait until a bunch of episodes have been published and then they can kind of, have a really dig in and, and read a bunch at a time um, because they, they don't like that anticipation, but others do. And so it's kind yeah. of, you can choose how, how you want to read the content. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what's um, good about it. You get to choose. And we were kind of talking about it between us before we came on air and some of us were binge readers and some of us loved the idea of the anticipation. So the idea is that there are different types of readers who will read in different ways. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I'm really intrigued by the idea of it being like this long running thing. Like when I think of a book, you know, these are, these are very finite kind of, you know, you have 30 chapters and then once you've gone through that, but kind of what I'm feeling from you and maybe I'm wrong, but this could be something that could continue. You could create a town and it could just be the ongoing story of those you know maybe a couple of main characters within that town or something like and mm. you could just go on for as long as the readers were continuing to read those episodes is that yeah yeah, yeah definitely and we're excited I mean you know it's up to the authors and kind of what what is the story that they have to tell and how does it work and what are readers up for reading but we definitely like see the opportunity for that where stories just could go on for years and years um, yeah. and it would be really fun to see that Mm. Oh, it's, it's kind of like a um, like a Netflix or on demand thing. That's actually a library, right? That yeah. you can go mm. in whenever you want and and either take one episode out or just watch the whole lot in it mm. in a never ending. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah, a great way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. So, is there as was there other examples out there that you were taking this from, or is this something that that Amazon has decided? Like, I'm just thinking these sort of ones out there, like Wattpad or Radish, or you know, other ones that have similar model. Is this something that you see as um, or we obviously do like something that's becoming bigger and bigger out in the market for authors? So serial reading, I mean, it has, it goes back to like Dickens, right? Like that's mm -hmm. how his novels were released in, you know, chapter by chapter in the newspaper. So ser serial publishing and serial reading has kind of always been a thing. And I think, you know, the, the way our, um, our connection to our mobile phones <laughs> that we've developed and that they are always with us um, wherever we go um, has, has kind of given a new, a new take on that um, mm -hmm. and the ability to, to have that quick read um, from a device that you have, have with you at any time. Um, so we definitely kind of see, you know, Kindle Vela, um, you know, fitting into that, that long history of serial publishing and reading, but kind mm -hmm. of you know, the, the take on it, you know, uh, the, the 2021 take on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I just and want so to ask a question, if, mm -hmm. if I may, where did you get the name from? <laughs> <laughs> We need some very well, concerned about this. There's this podcast <laughs> with this lovely lady, Wendy Bella. We're, we're oh, We knew it. <laughs> we thought that sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, um, it it we came we just kind of came up with it. It's not um, kind of intended to mean anything specific. Right. We just thought that it kind mm. of it it fit well with, with mm. the concept. Mm. Well, well, all she, of the people who live in you in Podgora and Maltese are going to love it because that's where yeah. it comes from. <laughs> ah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm looking forward to a Amazon program with Barrett as a surname. It's and not going to happen. <laughs> no <laughs> way is it as cool as Valor. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can't, you can't just leave. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah. You. You've got to kind of share the love around. The yeah. <laughs> I'll keep it in mind for my next thank project. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so, so these two aspects of that I find fascinating. The one is that it's mobile only. So there's there's that clearly let that that you you and you talked about this already. You know, the people are carrying these phones around with them at all times, and so there's no. So is there a other kind of expectations you have for who is going to be reading it? Like, I just wondered whether this was aimed at younger people or is it just everyone who's holding a phone um you know what's is there any other kind of 
audience it was expectations. Target audience. Yeah. 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 We're, we're excited to kind of see who, who it resonates with. Um, so both, both on the author side, you know, for the authors who are, who are publishing these stories and for the readers, um, you know, we're, it's been really fun so far to see. So I, I think you mentioned we opened the, um, the publishing experience in April mm-hmm. and it's been really fun to see, you know, who the authors are coming in and what kinds of stories they're telling. Um, and now that we've launched to readers, you know, what, wh- who that is appealing to, what readers are attracted by those stories. Um, and it really, it really runs the gamut. So we, one of the features that we introduced with this story is um, the ability for authors to add tags to their stories. Um, so beyond kind of just the, the you know, romance category, the, the author can add up to seven tags that just kind of signal to readers looking for stories a little bit more about, you know, more detail about their story, um, a subgenre or, um, you know, specific topic that they're covering or a specific audience that might be interested in the story. And if you, if you look in our Kindle Vela store at all of the tags, you just see that it's, it really, it's across kind of all genres, um, you know, appealing to all kinds of different audiences. And so, um, you know, we aren't looking at kind of one specific demographic where, you know, we think that this could appeal to, you know, all kinds of people depending on the stories that are told. And it's been fun to kind of see that come to life um, over the last few months. Yeah. So can, can um, readers search those tags? Is that the idea? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then so you... if you, if you're, uh, you can browse our store by tag. So if you clicked on, you know, paranormal romance as, as a tag, you would see all the stories that have that tag. Um, you can search by that in a store um, and, and kind of browse and figure out, you know, look for very, very specific topics that you're interested in based on, based on the tag. So is the it... tag is, um, is not quite the same as a keyword that you would use when you're loading a book and the fact that it would just be one word or could you use a sentence as that tag? You, I don't know if you'd want to use a whole sentence right. that might be a little unwieldy, but a combo of words. I mean, very similar right. to how you see tag, like tags used on social media, like on mm. Instagram or Twitter yeah. or something like that. Mm. Um, and we also use the tags that the author inputs as keywords as well. So you can search by them. Uh, so readers uh-huh. can search by them and then the story will show up. Yeah. Mm. is that the main discoverability like if some if I was a reader coming onto the platform is that the best do I can I search by author and or genre as well or is it just via these the tags like how does that you can you could search by author you could search by genre you could search by tag um you could browse you could browse by all of those as well so the the Kindle Vela store has kind of entry points um at high level categories so you know your action and adventure romance Uh, science fiction and then you can browse by the individual tags as well another feature that we introduce that is also helpful in terms of discovering stories um, are called faves Um, and so the way that faves work are um, once a week readers who um, have uh, and I can talk more about this but who have unlocked um, a a story um, so bought bought tokens and paid money to unlock a story um, will receive a fave um, and they get one per week. And the idea is that as a reader, you kind of vote or give your fave to the story that you've enjoyed the most. Um, And then what we do is we collect the stories with the most faves on our storefront. So you can kind of see the stories that are resonating the most with other readers that are the most popular that they've given kind of that one um, that one vote that they get per week to that story. Um, and so that's a great way to also find, you know, stories that, that have become really popular and that other readers are enjoying. Oh, that's cool. That's, mm, it kind of makes yeah. it a little bit more, um, and maybe this is on purpose, a little bit more like social media for as well, like you're kind of using that, um, the upvoting and the Social and the proof hashtags. kind of thing. Yeah, mm. like this is social mm. proof, but also the kind of the tags yeah. to kind of help kind of gather that. Is that, is that on purpose? Is that kind of what you're aiming for there? Yeah, we really wanted to introduce more um, engagement between Mm -hmm. um, the authors and the readers and the, you know, between the readers to each other as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So kind of along those lines, one of the other things we introduced um, are called author notes. 
Um, and so, you know, stories are published uh, episode by episode. And at the end of each episode, the author, when they're publishing, has the opportunity to leave an author's note. And it's really a chance to kind of break the fourth wall and speak directly to their readers. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've seen authors use this um, to just kind of say how excited they are that, you know, people are reading their story and that they're having so much fun writing it and, you know, make sure to come back for the next episode or when the next episode is going to be available. Um, or, you know, perhaps they're going on vacation, there's going to be a pause in the kind of expected mm -hmm. schedule, um, but, or like their, their uh, inspiration for a character or location or something like that. Um, and that's been really fun to see authors starting to use that to speak directly to their readers um, and just creates more of that, that direct connection. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the faves, the tags, and the author's note are kind of three of the ways that we've tried to build more of that interact, interactivity mm -hmm. and engagement between the readers and the, and the authors. And we're yeah. excited to kind of continue innovating along those lines too. And there's, there's also a thumbs up, am I right? There is, yeah. yes. There's a thumbs up at the end of each episode. Um, a reader can give a thumbs up if they if they liked it. And, and so when you're reading an episode, you can see, oh, you know, this many people have given this episode a thumbs up. Um, and then we, we show the aggregated number of thumbs up on the story kind of information page so you can see um, how, you know, how many people roughly mm -hmm. have been enjoying it. That's awesome. A little bit of social proof sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Lack of review, but, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh, that's a good question. But I'm going to, so what I think first, though, we should start with before we keep going is let's explain how it works in terms of, so there's episodes and then you talked about the tokens and how people, you know, purchase the episode so if you could kind of break that down for us um yeah awesome. definitely thank you for going back to that because I did kind of skip over that with the faves um yeah so the way the way that it works is um so stories are published episode by episode um the episodes can range um in word count from 600 to 5,000 words um and then the first three episodes of every story are always free um, for readers. And the idea there is just to allow readers to kind of get a feel for the story, um, read, you know, read a few stories and, and figure out, you know, what story they are enjoying and if they want to keep reading it. Um, and then from there, the subsequent episodes are locked. And so what um, the reader does then is they'll be prompted to buy tokens um, and then the, they use the tokens, they redeem them to unlock the episodes. Um, so the tokens are, uh, they would buy tokens by the bundle um, and you can buy them on amazon.com or they're also uh, for sale in the Kindle uh, iOS app uh, via in-app purchase. So um, as you're reading along and you get to episode four and it's locked, you're, and you don't, if you don't have any tokens, if this is, you know, you're a new reader, you'll be immediately kind of prompted to buy the token so you can keep reading oh. in, a, in a seamless way. Um, and new readers um, of Kindle Vela all get 200 tokens for free um, to get them kind of continue uh, reading and get a better feel for Kindle Vela and the story um, and then go from there. Yeah. Are the stories worth different tokens depending on how long they are or what genre or? Exactly. So the, um, the episode, the, the amount of tokens required to unlock an episode is automatically set based on word count. Mm -hmm. um, so at the rate of one token for every hundred words. So a 600 word episode would be six tokens. Okay. Right. Okay. And how does that translate in sort of payment to the author? Does that that Great question. Work? Yeah. So the way that our royalties work is authors receive 50% of the money readers spend on the tokens they use to redeem, uh, to unlock their episodes. Um, so there's a 50% um, rev share. And then um, on top of that, we also have a launch bonus um, that we just announced the first um, installment of um, for stories that were available for the month of July. Um, and together kind of the, the combination of the 50% and the bonus, um, we, we feel is a pretty compelling um, option, you know, new option for authors in terms of publishing and, and uh, making, making a living doing mm -hmm. uh, their writing. And how has it been received by authors? Have they received it well? 
Yeah, it's been real. Like I, I was saying earlier, so, you know, we we've had um, longer with the authors than we have with the readers mm-hmm. so far because we opened yeah. the publishing experience in April, um, and it's been amazing just to see the interest and engagement from authors, um, and kind of even more more you know on top of that, just the creativity that um, authors are bringing um, to to this new experience. So I mean, obviously, authors by nature are creative people, and um, it's been fun to see them trying all kinds of different things, you know, not just, you know, different genres, but different publishing schedules, the way they're using author notes, uh, using tags, the, uh, the way they're kind of engaging with their readers around how they're publishing this. Um, it's been great to see. So when we, we were excited when we launched in July to have kind of thousands of stories, um, you know, from thousands of, of authors and, and felt really great about the selection we were starting with um, when we launched for readers. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, can we just cover uh, where what countries it's available in at the moment, just for anybody listening? Yes. So right now it is only available for uh, U.S. based authors and U.S. based readers. Um, so I know you know your listeners are kind of around the world. Um, so for for those in the U.S., they can check it out, um, and you know we hope to bring it kind of, you know, more broadly. And so we'll ask, we'll ask everybody else to stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. But, but, I mean, it's the same as other things that have been rolled out rolled over out, time so and yeah, like across Kager, the world. Yeah. 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 And so is it, it's only available, I understand too. So on um, iOS um, um, devices um, through, so does that mean that it's through a, an app, uh, sorry, an Apple app? Is that right? Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah, so right now it's available um, in the Kindle for iOS app um, and on the web. Um, mm-hmm. And so what that means is, is we, we have a mobile, um, a mobile web experience. So very similar to the app experience, but you, know, you would use it in a browser on your okay. mobile device. Yeah. Um, and then we also have an experience for you know, desktop computer. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, if, um, you don't have an iOS device, there is still like, you can still read these stories, um, and interact with them, um, on, in a, in a mobile browser on another type of device. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are, are there plans to do Android or is it just, it's going to be iOS only? Just ask you to stay tuned on that one. Okay. <laughs> 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 right. Um, and so let's, so we, we know how it works now. We kind of, I have feel like we've got a good picture so are there can I just ask one thing about oh, that sorry yeah I just really would like to know how much um as a token to buy or and do you buy them in, in groups like you know a bulk amount at a time yeah so you buy them in um in groups in in so we call them bundles um so starting at um so 200 tokens for one dollar and 99 cents um, and then we have a variety of bundles that you can purchase either on the web um, or through in-app purchase um, through the right. Kindle for iOS app. Brilliant. So there's a number of different options to, to purchase more, um, mm. a, a, a larger number of tokens at a time. Mm. That's great. Thank you. And is that, do you think that's, a, that's working as a, as a process? Like, is it likely to stay like that or is it something that's just being assessed? Yeah, I mean, so far, so far, we're getting good feedback. The idea behind it um, was to try and make the the reading experience as seamless as possible. So if you think about you're kind of reading these episodes, they're fairly short. Um, And so and if you're reading, if you're one of those readers who doesn't like the anticipation and wants to wait for all of the episodes to kind of be all published at once and read at once, um, you want to easily go from, you know, one episode to the next. And so we wanted to remove the friction of having, oops, sorry, of having to go through a checkout process each time, you know, to buy an, another episode. So um, you kind of can buy the tokens up front and then with one click unlock the episodes and just keep reading very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just, it doesn't take you out of the reading experience. You can just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, so that was the, the idea behind the tokens and, and how they'll work. Mm, and we're kind of used sense. to it aren't we on phones we're used to on games you know if you get to candy crush certain level and you really 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 <laughs> just not not that i'm speaking from experience here no, but, <laughs> you know, no that doesn't sound at of, all like it's kind of it's kind of 
part of almost that psychological using a phone you're kind of used to that aren't you you know mm. that kind of gamifying it in a way the reading mm. experience mm. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that sounds like a great idea. Like, I mean, I hadn't thought about it, but actually the idea of having to go back in through some yeah. kind of um, payment system every time I wanted to yeah. get a new chapter is actually quite a big barrier. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so could we could we go back to, um, so, so if we're thinking from an author's perspective and we're thinking, okay, so we know, we know that the first three chapters are free, for example. And so are there some tips or advice that you can give authors about what's working or what, you know, like what, like for me, I would think that you would want a really big hook at the end of that third chapter that's going to, or a cliffhanger <laughs> that's going to make people want to buy the fourth chapter. Are there, are there things like that, that that you've seen that authors are using really well that you can kind of um, tell our audience about? It's still super early days, so I don't have kind of one um, tip or even a few kind of tips or tricks that we've seen, you know, very consistently working. Like I said, we've seen authors really experimenting with this. I think the key thing um, is just to make sure that, um, you know, the reader can get enough of a sense of the story in those first three episodes um, to feel, you know, to feel that connection that we were talking about, that connection with the characters mm -hmm. um, and, or, you know, that connection with the world or the town or whatever it is um, that they'll want to keep going. Um, so I, th I think that's kind of the main thing. Um, and then it, and then I think it depends on the story and the genre, you know, what, um, what will work well um, and what you think, you know, your readers will most respond to. Um, mm. But I think there's definitely lots of different ways that that could be, could be approached. Yeah. yeah. I guess the shorter um, each episode is, the less you'd want to put in any backstory or anything like that. You just mm. want it to be quite snappy and, mm. and yeah. moving forward at, at a good pace, I, I would think. Mm. Mm. And I would I would imagine character would be a big part of it. Like if you want you want that get that connection with a character really early on. Sorry, we're just brainstorming here, Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. One of the stories that I'm reading, um, it's called The Marriage Auction. It's by Audrey Carlin. And something fun that she does is each episode, so she has um a, like I'm going to get the number wrong, but a, a few main characters and each, uh, each episode is told from the point of view of, of, of a different character and you kind of rotate oh, through them. It's clear. Oh, um, so it was really fun starting to read it. You read the first episode and you're like, oh, I feel a connection with this character. And then the next episode, oh, it's somebody else. And then, you know, you, I wanted to keep going and like, who else am I, who else is the story going to be told by, you know, from their point of view. Yeah. And also, you know, what happens to that character that I met in the first chapter you know yeah. it, it doesn't you know, go back to her thing. until chapter five I want to find out what <laughs> yeah. happens yeah. next yeah um so that's a, that's a fun and we've seen a, a few authors doing that but it's as a as a reader and a fan I, it's really fun yeah oh. then there's an open to all genres mm -hmm. yeah oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's fascinating. I feel like, like before this interview, I, I was kind of thinking, oh, you know, it's like you could just split your book up and bung it up and it would be, you know, put it episodes. Sorry, bung it up. Put it up very carefully. I got it. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, but now I'm thinking it's almost because it's, it's, it's like something you could, you would want to actually rethink and kind of because there's these kind of very specific aspects to it that you mm. can take advantage of that actually a book that was designed to be, be, you know, as a one, a novel, a novel yeah. it put up and say on, on, as a normal novel on Amazon is what I'm trying yes. to say <laughs> is very different to what might work as a serialization on, on you'd Kindle have Bella. to write a specific serial wouldn't you? you'd have to mm. rewrite feel like your you book into a serial it wouldn't work if you yeah. just put it up your book because no. our chapters are so long you yeah. know it would it would have to be written specifically for it mm. it's really interesting I'm quite fascinated mm. Mm. Oh, I've actually got a question. How does somebody go about publishing on it? We like just for anybody listening to explain, we we haven't seen the back end if you like when we can't. Yeah. So I just wonder if you could just tell us through your eyes how somebody goes about publishing on it. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we try to make it kind of as easy as possible. So similar to the, the reading experience, which is supposed to be kind of very, a very lightweight, seamless reading experience. We also wanted the publishing experience to be pretty lightweight um, and straightforward as well. Um, thinking, you know, exactly along the lines of what you all were just saying, that if you're kind of writing this story to be, you know, um, published in this serial fashion, um, you, you know, you may be kind of publishing more frequently than you would going, you know, setting up a full novel. 
Um, so basically, as, as an author, you, you kind of, it's all through Kindle Direct Publishing. So you go to um, KDP um, and um, there's a, a specific part of KDB set up to specifically for Kindle Vela. So you go there um, and enter your, you know, kind of your title, your author name, if you have a specific pen name that you want to publish under for these types of stories. Um, write a, a short description of the story that will appear kind of on the story detail page and are those tags that we were talking about, a um, couple other pieces of information, and then just start go, you know, go to enter your first episode. Um, and so each episode can be um, is published one by one. And um, we have the option of just uploading a Word doc, or we actually have an inline text editor that if you want to just you know, write straight into, um, into it oh. and publish from oh, there. Wow. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. yeah. It's just to make it just, uh, easy, uh, as easy as possible. And actually, um, Hugh Howie wrote, um, uh, his biography for, <laughs> for Kindle Vela. Um, and he, I think he's talked about that he used the inline text editor and kind of experimented with it. And it was kind of a different publishing experience for him. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and then you just publish the episode um, and then kind of repeat the process with, with each episode as you're ready ready to go. Um, we do have a, a scheduling feature. Mm -hmm. So if you have, and we and so we've seen authors do all kinds of different things. So some authors um, have, have a whole story that they've been sitting on and it, they've written it, but they di didn't quite have the right format to publish it. And they say, oh, this is perfect for Kindle Bell. I'm gonna publish it here. Um, and they publish it all at once. Um, we've seen other authors similarly have a full story kind of ready to go and thinking it's a good fit for Vela um, and then publishing it one, um, one episode at a time though on a, some kind of release schedule and they've used mm -hmm. that scheduling feature. So like every right. Tuesday and Thursday, the episodes will come out mm -hmm. um, or you can write and publish as you go. Mm -hmm. um, but the scheduling feature allows you to kind of um, write in advance of your publishing schedule. So if you have something already that you want to release over time or you want to just stay a few episodes ahead yeah. um, and schedule out that works as which well which seems sensible <laughs> yeah, what about graphics? do you have a cover at all or is the cover go through each serial oh. how does that work oh great question oh my internet my internet froze That's right. okay and we got you <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, we're back. Um, great question. Yes. Um, so when you are uh, entering the story, the story details like the title and um, the author name, there is um, uh, an image that you will upload that will be your story cover. Um, and so each story has its own um, detail page. So like with a list of the episodes. Um, and so that, that story, that one story image will kind of be the image for your story th right. throughout oh, the store right. and the reading okay. experience. So it's yeah. the same image for each episode and it would just be yeah. different episodes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So sense. it's yes. episodes, not chapters, it's episodes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So what happens to this work is, I, I mean, I, I just want to understand if Kindle Vela then becomes exclusive, that book becomes exclusive to them, or at some stage, do, can you then upload it as a novel? You can absolutely publish it as a novel or book or whatever, um, you know, makes sense. Um, so what the, so the way that, it, the, the way that it works is um, once you've started writing a story, um, you can then publish um, the story or, or pieces of the story if you kind of want to publish it as seasons or something like that mm -hmm. as, as a book. Um, as long as you are kind of packaging at least 10 episodes um, to, to provide, you know, a good reader experience. Um, mm -hmm. And that and that the latest episode that you are including in the book has been live on Kindle Vella for 30 days. So wow. that customers who are kind of still still reading the story have a wow. good experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we absolutely, you know, can see that the opportunity to, to package these as books and publish mm -hmm. them for for mm. readers to read that way as well. Would you have seasons like, or would you just continue? So if you, you say you, in Vela, you would have the, um, you know, this one story with this one cover. Is it something that you see going on for years or would you see someone like maybe doing episodes as in this is episode one and it lasted, you know, kind of like a, a television series does. Like if we're using the episode and the, those kind of that terminology, is that kind of how you see it going? 
like what's the I think it I think it will work both ways and I think again it'll depend on the author and the story itself so we've already seen some stories um published you know with the title like season one or series one um with you know kind of indicating the intention to have you know a subsequent story that will be season two or series two mm. um you know and then but some other stories may you know the author may prefer or the story may be better suited to just be one long story that goes on and on and on. I think mm -hmm. it really depends on kind of the author, the story um, and the readers. Mm -hmm. I'd be fascinated to find out, like, I mean, obviously it's very early days now, but I'd love to find out mm. if the difference between that, whether there are readers who mm. are just, who just wanted that continuing. Like yeah. when I think about, you know, when you finish a book that's been amazing and you get that massive book hangover and you just want to go hang out back in with those characters, maybe this is the way that people can continue to hang out mm. with them. I don't know. Mm. Or is that something we want to do? Maybe the book hangover <laughs> is an important part of it. I don't know. Yeah. No, when do you, when, sorry, sorry, I was okay, just going to ask one thing, Sha. And when do you think it would roll out further, or is it is it going to stay? I mean, it's, it's obviously still in the early stages, but do you do you envision it rolling out to everyone else? I can't comment in detail um, oh, yeah. on that, but um, definitely, you know, of course, we want the most people to to use this. Um, yeah. So, you know, just all I can you kind can, of say is stay can, tuned. You can see on Wendy's face that she's already got an idea for a story know, that she wants to put on, <laughs> and that it. she's like really. How did you know? So. <laughs> so I've got a question: Is um, so again, just from an author perspective, loading is it is it attached to your author central page so if you've got yeah, your novels sure. is it searchable that way as well not at this time it isn't okay is there a reason for that or is it is it like i'm just thinking from a marketing perspective is it two different audiences is that why we kind of ring fencing it off or is it just a one of those back end things <laughs> <laughs> um no it's not i don't it's not um about the audiences, I think, you know, it's some, it's another kind of area just to stay, to stay tuned on, stay tuned okay. on, yeah. we're just, mm. you know, we're just getting started. Um, mm. So, yeah. 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 As an author who writes big books, it's, it's actually it would be quite a refreshing thing to write something like in small <laughs> bites, you know, mm. it really would, wouldn't it? You know, you're all with me on that. You yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. because sometimes you just don't want to sit down and just write screeds. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of a cereal really appears. Yeah. That's yeah. right. If you could roll right. that to New Zealand next, we'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> How about anyone else in the world? Wendy. I gave you my name after all. Yeah, I was going to say, Wendy's <laughs> pulling the Valor card here. So, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I think from a nonfiction perspective, you know, it's kind of like it could be, as Hugh Howie's done with his yeah. autobiography, almost like blogging, isn't it? It's almost yeah. like that kind of... Um, platform for that too so it's interesting mm -hmm. I mean we're obviously fiction authors and our audience probably primarily is but that's another I guess so, uh, kind of it just hit me then it's, um yeah it would bring in a, I yeah. should imagine you bring in a whole new audience of people who don't yeah that's a question I have yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know like people who, who have not normally bought a long box because they don't have that attention span I mean I'm just thinking of my father who can't read more than a few thousand words at a time um and something like this would be perfect for him you know mm -hmm. just that serial he could just pick one up read it put it down I know yeah. you can do that with a book but that would suit him yeah yeah I think it's a fun opportunity for authors to you know both engage existing readers um with with a new format either kind of like with um you know a side story or something that relates to their you know other um their other works um or just something that they you know different try something different um yeah. but i think it's also you know can be a fresh opportunity to engage and attract readers who may prefer reading in this format and might mm. not not uh, be reading their full books otherwise mm. Mm. is your sense Virginia that it is a different and I'm not asking for you know um, <laughs> company um, classified information here from market Although research you could, but you could give it to us if you want like, to. You <laughs> don't hold that we're not gonna you know we welcome it but is it you feel is it a different type of audience I'm thinking of the what we call the whale readers and in, in Kindle Unlimited you know particularly in the romance genre you know those readers are just um you know they're Gracious. reading a book a day kind of thing is it that audience or is it a different audience do you think obviously there's a crossover but what's your sense 
Yeah, I think it's it's early. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. kind of early to know. Um, I think I think it has the possibility for both. I think you know, it it depends on kind of the the stories um, and um, the, the different kind of appetites of readers and their lifestyles and how they like to read. I, you know, I think that there will be some readers, you know, who are just voracious readers and who, you know, read, you know, constantly reading a book, but, um, you know, I can, you know, find a Kindle Vela story that they really love. And that's a great opportunity to be reading even more, um, Mm -hmm. you know, when it would be difficult to like bring out a book, like maybe when they're Mm -hmm. waiting in line for their coffee or, um, for the bus or whatever our current world equivalent of that is <laughs> these days where we don't leave our house. Um, <laughs> but, and, and then, but then also appeal to readers who just don't, don't either don't have the time or the attention span or whatever it is to read a book, but do really love stories. Um, you know, maybe like maybe a busy mom who just, you know, has a few minutes mm-hmm. um, in between nap times or school drop off or whatever. And yeah. this is a great way to connect with a story to get that, um, you know, that quick escape, um, mm-hmm. where, you know, sh- you know, she's not going to have the time or f- ability to find a book and read the book mm-hmm. or do anything like that. Yeah. Uh, this could be a, a silly question because I'm not that very technical, but does it, will it, will there be an audio aspect to it at all or, uh, or something like down the line that people can, can, can do this in audio as well for people to listen to? Right now it's just, t- it's just text and reading, mm-hmm. but that's a really, really interesting suggestion. Just thinking, I, I'll get in the audio. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, I just, I lo- I'm an audio girl, and I just sometimes want to listen to something short. You know, I just was curious as to whether yeah. it might yeah, be no, something totally long term. Yeah. Having yeah. said that, to be honest, the the text to speech apps are getting better and better. So it's almost, you know, it's yeah. almost something mm. that you could kind of mm. combine in the two. Mm. Um, just a question from a reader perspective. Um, so they get to the end of the chapter. Is does it link on? Is there a link um, at the end of that chapter to the next one? Like, how do they keep going? Yes. So basically, you um, so it's it's a vertical scroll reading experience. Mm-hmm. So kind of like you would read a news article or something yeah. on your phone. So you scroll down, and then when you get to the end, a little um, bottom sheet pops up um, and says, "Kind of next episode." And ah. so you can click that, um, and then. Um, if you have, if you have tokens, you can just tap again and then keep reading. Um, or if you need to buy tokens, it'll, it'll right. prompt you to do that in that bottom sheet. So okay. it's literally just kind of tapping through that. And then you're yeah. immediately in the next episode. You don't have to navigate anywhere else to keep reading. So and, it's kind of kept, keeps the people in there, if you like, keeps them in the app, um, as it were, keeps them in the story. Is that something that the author does or is that automatic from... Um, I'm just thinking of linking things as an author uploading. Yeah, it's the way that the the reading experience is designed. Ah. Is it just automatically flows yep. if there is a next episode yes. from episode to okay. next episode? Cool. So, yeah. so it's yeah. not at all. Yeah. Um, sorry. All right. You go. Um, Who's going? Mine was actually um, from the author's perspective because you said something interesting earlier about um, you know the author could leave a note if they were going on holiday or that, or that sort of thing. So it's it's just like being on Amazon with your book anyway and the fact that there's no expectation for you to actually put up the next episode on any particular time unless you skip it obviously so you know you're kind of like free range you can put your episodes up when you like yeah that's true I think what we have seen is that um, publishing on a regular schedule um, is definitely um a a successful strategy, building that expectation with readers of, you know, how often, um, even if it's not a specific like day and time, but just knowing that there will be kind of one new episode a week Mm -hmm. um, or something like that, I think is helpful to kind of set the expectations and keep the readers engaged. Mm -hmm. um, Because I think, you know, if they're they're not sure when the next episode is going to come or if there'll be a next episode, Mm -hmm. um, they may, um, they may not end up, you know, engaging as much with the story. Mm. Yeah. Do they and get a, a notification? Do readers get a notification when yeah, there's a new episode? Said that yeah, oh, yeah great question. Yeah. That was yeah. that was one feature that I didn't mention. So we also have the ability oh, to follow a story. Ah. Um, so when you find kind of that, oh. that story that you love or multiple stories that you love, um, readers can follow the story. 
Um, and then they will have kind of a list of them in the, in the top of their store so they can immediately uh, kind of get back nice. into reading them. Um, and then in the Kindle for iOS app, there's a, a push notification, a notification right. on your phone that comes out um, when a new episode is released. So we, um, so, you know, uh, readers are alerted that a new one is available. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. So what about discoverability? Sorry, Trudy, you keep trying to say something and we're jumping all over you. It's all right. It's uh, excitement. It's <laughs> <laughs> discoverability. Um, you know, Amazon ads and things like that. Will they be targeting it in, uh, you know, as um, Kindle Valor at some stage or? Right now, um, we don't have, so like you, through KDP, you can do advertising of your, of your books. Um, right now we don't have that for Kindle Vela, um, but we've been marketing, um, the, the kind of Kindle Vela as a new program, as a new reading opportunity. Um, and we'll definitely, you know, it's, it's early days and we'll kind of be evolving the opportunities from there. So you you are as Amazon putting it out there and tr- and getting more readers coming into the platform and downloading the app and, and doing all those kinds of things. Are yeah, there ongoing definitely. ongoing things? So once I'm just thinking, you know, are there people that come in and they look at it and then they forget about it? Is there an ongoing kind of marketing thing to remind them to come back in, or is it like how does that work from your? Um, I mean, without getting kind of too much into the details of our marketing programs, I mean, yeah. we definitely want, you know, new readers to come and find Kindle Vela. And once they start using it, we definitely want to keep them engaged, making sure they're finding, you know, being alerted when stories that they are interested in have new episodes, when new mm-hmm. stories they are interested in might, you know, are published, might, or, sorry, new stories they might be interested in are published mm-hmm. um, and things like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And are there, like, I'm just going back to what you were talking about before about the, you know, continually uh, making sure that you're putting up the episodes regularly. I can just, I know that readers, there's a certain set of readers that won't read a, a series of books until the final book in the series is out and things like that, because they have been burned by authors putting up, you know, one or two books in a series and not completing it. Do you have any ways to, I mean, I can just imagine maybe there might be instances of, of that happening within Vela and I don't know, the ways that you're going to, look at that or is it just a matter of the readers have to make their own decisions and hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, we author, definitely we yeah. definitely want to provide those signals to readers to understand like is this an ongoing series how regularly yeah. is it published so right now on the story detail page it'll say kind of x episodes have been published in the last 30 days yeah. that gives mm. you kind of a feeling mm. for whether it's it's an active story yeah. um and definitely looking to um to continue to innovate in that area to to provide that kind of information um, to ensure readers have a good experience and kind of have mm. have the right expectations and authors can signal to them mm. um, so that everybody's kind of on the same page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it the similar ranking system? Like uh, if you do, if pe- more people are uh, buying, you know, your cereal, will you get better promotion sort of thing like you do with your books and say KU or, you know, anything like that? Does the ranking system work the same? Um, it kind of depends on on w- uh, where you're looking in our store. So, I mean, it's um, it is Amazon where these the stories are being um, made available on Amazon, and so a lot of that um, logic exists throughout the the website and the shopping yeah. experience. Um, I think the new area that we've introduced is the that kind of fave leaderboard where yeah. um, you know we show the stories that the people are kind of directly giving their faves to um, and that's that's a different discovery experience. Mm-hmm. Oh sounds awesome. interesting. Are there ways mm-hmm. for authors to um, like, you know, if we're thinking about marketing, like, like, like there's sort of things within the platform that maybe are the ones that you can talk about, but like for authors to be kind of drawing readers in and, and pulling them into their stories, perhaps, but also into the Bella platform, is that? Yeah, we've seen, um, you know, we've seen some of our initial authors um, who are really active on social media, engaging directly with mm-hmm. their readers, um, both letting them know that they've published um, a Kendall Vela story and using it to, to, to kind of engage with them um, about the story and let them know that it's kind of ongoing and here's a new episode and what do you think and kind of all of that. So, you know, Audrey Carlin, who I mentioned, you know, I'm reading her story, you know, she's very active and is kind of, um, you know, talking to her fans both through the 
the author's note, but then also kind of taking the conversation over to her social media following um, and engaging with her readers there. Um, and that, you know, she's been very active and, and her fans have been uh, very active in response. And mm-hmm. we've seen a number of authors doing that. Yeah. yeah. But it makes sense. Sorry, you go, that, chef. No, I was just saying it makes sense because you're on your phone. So it mm. kind of, and the people that are, I'm guessing, likely to use this, the readers, are going to be kind of, you know, I'm I'm holding my left hand down here with my phone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My non-existent phone. But, you know, we um, they're going to be the ones that are engaged with their phone already kind of thing. So it makes sense that a social media, there's not, it's not, not a big leap is what I'm trying to say between mm-hmm. social media and using an app like this mm-hmm. more so than a reading a book I mean I read books my Kindle app on my phone but this is kind of I don't know I like the push notification I can hear every author panting for that uh, for the <laughs> main KDP store just saying is it to your author central page you know like when you no, no it doesn't we've already read. discovered that have yeah. we mm. yeah. yeah so no my my question was this if I had a book up on um uh, Amazon, and then I decided to serialize it into into Kindle Vella. There's no link, is what I'm saying. You couldn't go in and go, oh, this is available in Kindle Vella or anything like that. It's just completely separate. Does that make any sense to anyone? Yes. It does. I followed that. So right <laughs> now, <laughs> right? Uh, no. So there's no link from okay. kind of book story books book pages to our story pages. Mm-hmm. I think one thing I just want to note is, you know, to the the um, comment that was made earlier of like you you wouldn't necessarily want to take a book and and divide it up and publish it this way you'd want to write it (laughs) specifically for this format just because of the way you know readers are are reading it um so so yeah we um we intentionally have asked that that authors not kind of take right. existing books and do that just be for the same reasons that we were talking about in terms of yep. the reader experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you had a story that was like a, you know, some kind of spinoff of a, of a book you had mm-hmm. or something like that, um, mm-hmm. you could take kind of the, the final um, part of the chap, like final chapter of that book and, you know, start the story, the first episode of the story with that and that, mm-hmm. use that as a bridge and go mm-hmm. from there. I, oh, I could cool. imagine some really cool stories. Like, so for example, Wendy has a, um, a main series set in a, in a particular town or whatever. You take the secondary characters and do a, like a little mini spin-off mm. Vela series that it was or kind the of- Or the prequel or the lead into it. Yeah, or there was something, yeah. some, some way mm. to connect that. So people are mm. reading, so people who are fans of Wendy and Wendy's Towns get to go onto Vela and read the backstory or read more, more, more in depth or read mm. the story of the, yeah, the cafe of owner well. who never, he never mm. gets a main, a main story for himself, yeah. but becomes the star of a Vela serial mm. somehow like there's loads of kind of ways to link that by Vela. quite exciting mm. yeah so it'd be Wendy Vela on Vela so so I'm just sort of thinking <laughs> that you really need to get New Zealand into the whole yeah. Vela thing um, so it's in terms awesome. of authors marketing within Vela um so pr- ways to to promote their books into so we clearly want to have be the favorite which is just maybe about good writing and thinking about hooks and and getting people into reading t- you know, really good hooky end of chapters or end of episodes and and, and awesome characters and awesome story or whatever. The, the author's note is another one. So you've talked a little bit about ways that authors, are, are there any other suggestions or ways that authors could be using the author note to help kind of promote their books or help develop a connection there? Yeah, I think, you know, it'll, it depends on the author. So I think we've seen um, we've seen it used in a variety of ways from kind of sharing, um, you know, the inspiration for a, um, like a locate, like the location that, um, a story takes place in and that, um, you know, one author, uh, whose story I was reading was just like really fascinated with kind of the Midwest and Oklahoma and was setting this story there. Um, and, and, the, the geography was like ve- very alive in, um, in the story itself. It was kind of, you know, one of those um, situations where like the location is actually kind of a character mm. in the story as well. Um, but then would use the author note to kind of bring that, you know, take that even a step further and talk about this personal connection they felt with that, that place and, and why it was um, kind of being brought out so much in mm. the story. Um, you know, so that's kind of one way we've seen it used, um, where it is sharing something personal, but very focused on the story. Um, 
we've seen other authors just kind of um, use it kind of more to um, just share their excitement on, you know, how fun it is to be writing in this format um, and just trying to share their, per like their personal emotion and mm -hmm. reaction to doing this as a way to connect with their readers um, and just, and create excitement. Like I'm excited. So, you know, we, I hope you're excited. Um, and that's, that's, you know, fun. And we've seen that be successful um, as well. Um, and, and, you know, I think another uh, kind of the final thing that we've seen used is just kind of um, to expand a little bit more. Uh, like, so we we've, we've, I seen uh, I have seen Hugh Howie do this, where especially kind of in a nonfiction setting, where um, just a, a little additional commentary about kind of the anecdote that he shared in that episode mm -hmm. or something like that that just. Mm -hmm um just creates a little bit more of that connection even though obviously it's a memoir and he's sharing his own personal story just doing it in a little bit more of a direct way mm -hmm. um so it's we've we've seen authors do all kinds of things and it's mm -hmm. it's really fun um so I think it's mm -hmm. just it's just about being authentic and sharing kind of something personal mm -hmm. that creates that connection yeah so you talked about the the experience of reading the episode as being a scrolling up and then is it is it a button that you click and go to a separate screen on or is it sitting at the bottom bottom of each episode or how does where does the note sit um it's it kind of is is part of the episode so you get to the end of the episode and it's it's delineated as a special mm -hmm. separate okay. thing but right. you don't have to tap yeah. anything or click anything it just it appears there before kind of you're prompted to go to the next episode oh, nice. okay so they generally are gonna pretty much read it yes yeah, yeah. it's right there yeah, yeah. okay and is there, have you any, seen any kind of, um, I, I know it's early days, and you probably, but any kind of preference for, you talked about the length being between 600 to 5,000, and that's quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. Is there a preference or is it just, again, different readers, different preferences? I think it's, I get, it's up to the kind of the author and the, the way you tell your stories yeah. um, okay. and, and kind of you know, to some extent experimenting and seeing what resonates with, with your readers. But um, I think, you know, each story kind of will merit a different structure. Um, and there isn't, that's kind of why we left it, you know, to be a pretty wide range um, to mm -hmm. give the authors some kind of freedom to, to do what works for them. To experiment mm -hmm. and see what works. Do, do you expect authors to just be on Valor? Like, I mean, is there, a, I'm just wondering whether these are kind of a style stylistic thing where maybe this Vela serialization thing appeals to some authors that actually won't publish as a books or is it not something you've thought about? I'm sorry it froze in the middle of your question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered why you were like looking at me. Looking at you, um, <laughs> so I was just I was just wondering whether you, the expectation is that there'll be authors who just publish on Vela like that it's a such a different kind of concept of this serialization that maybe there'll be people who for whom that is just what they want to do or is that not something you think about or I think we'll see both, you know, similar to what we were saying with the readers that we may have readers who, you know, read, who read books and Kindle Bella stories and some who may just read Kindle Bella stories. Um, I think we'll have the same with authors, um, authors who, you know, are writing books and then also writing Kindle Bella stories um, or, you know, new, new authors who are interested, you know, in just publishing in this format and come to Kindle Bella to do that. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Um, and, and I have a question about like the blog style, like Hugh Howie's comment that it's just like running a blog. Could, is that something that you, like if, if an author treated it like a blog, that they were just almost blogging the story or even a, a memoir, is that okay? Like, is it something you would, are ex expecting to be on the platform? Like, you know, have no... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if the author has a story to tell and that's how they want to tell it and, and it's resonating with readers for them, like that's, that's great. We're, we are kind of agnostic um, and just, and really excited to see um, and encourage authors to experiment and see what works. Mm. I just had this thought, like, wouldn't it be cool to have a character doing blog posts or something like a, like a <laughs> each week you, you're right. You've got your books that are the main, on the main platform. And then you have the, the blog entries or the diary entries from a character that come out weekly. It's kind of like another marketing mm. spin um, for the, for the author anyway. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Just, <laughs> just got lots of ideas that I want to share. Yeah. And when you're working with authors, I can imagine from your side of it that, you know, what you think, how they're going to approach it is probably there's, 
beyond that as well you know mm-hmm. it's just you know mm-hmm. people are people are clever they work out different they ways and you know <laughs> they are they are it's been really exciting I mean we were working on this for a while mm-hmm. um and kind of the day the day we were able to open it up to authors was was really exciting and, and then of course you know really exciting to open it up to readers as well mm-hmm. um but just seeing kind of those first stories getting published and, and to start reading them and to see Mm. kind of how people were bringing this to life, um, Mm -hmm. and using it. It was, um, it's been, it's been really fun. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Has it's anyone else got? Isn't it? No. Yeah, it's uh, I feel like we've kept poor Virginia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you this is the best part of my day. Yeah. <laughs> oh. She's going to have to go and have wine. <laughs> Take it over. Have you got any any final comments, Virginia, or anything that you want to make sure that our listeners kind of um, understand about the platform or anything like that? No, you guys asked excellent questions. I feel like we covered everything. Mm, um, you know, cover thank you so much for being interested in this, and um, you know, just definitely go in and check it out if you're in the U.S. and stay tuned if you're not. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, we're we love seeing kind of what authors are doing, um, and just you know, are encouraging everybody to to give it a try. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So um, the best the best place to go find out more about. Um, Kindle Valor, where would that be? Like straight to the app or? Yes. Um, if you go, if you, well, if you go to um, amazon.com backslash Kindle hyphen Bella, um, that is our store, um, or go to amazon.com backslash KDP mm-hmm. um, for the publishing experience. Awesome. Okay. Brilliant. And where can we be found if people we are can be found us? Yeah, we can be found at spargirlspodcast.com and you can see a real live Vela in action. She's there sitting there in her <laughs> black and white Natural shirt. habitat. <laughs> not to be confused with a Kindle yeah, there. Not to, yeah, so no. Um, and yeah, spargirlspodcast.com and, and come along and um, to our YouTube channel as well. We're picking up some excellent views on there. So thank you very much for everybody that joins us there. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today, Virginia, and thank you for listening to another episode of the Spa Girls podcast. Um, We will be back again next week, but in the meantime, farewell. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Thank you for having me.